What is going on, guys? It's Norlaxis here, bringing you what I believe is week eight of the PBF season nine. I, again, forgot to check exactly what week it is, but I think if I remember last week was week seven, this is week eight. Could be wrong, but we're going to go with it. So, we are up against our good pal Curtis, our Snorlax brother, who always picks Snorlax round one and uh, makes it so I can never get him. So, uh, screw you, Curtis. Love you, brother. Um... Yeah, he has a very offensive team that he brought this week. He has that Snorlax, which he loves, which I say offensive because he loves that offensive Snorlax. Uh, Mega Pinsir, Rotom Wash, Victini, Kabalion, and Flygon. Uh, take a at this. I brought my Mega Glade here. I brought Rhydon, Empoleon, Hydreigon, Thunderous, and Blacephalon. So I started to record this one live, but my sister has a project going on where there's a lot of, a lot of noise because so there's power tools involved and such. So. I had to scrap that and so I do a post comment instead, which will be nice. I am using a new form of recording here that someone had suggested to me. Uh, I'm hoping that it all works out well. We'll see how the video turns out here, but supposedly it can go longer than 15 minutes, so as long as I have no more noise interruptions or anything with family or projects going on, uh, I should be able to record everything live without worrying about the time. So without further ado, we'll get into this here. I just go right ahead and I start out with... My Empoleon, I'm wanting to get rocks up, but he starts with his Rotom Wash, which I wasn't a huge fan of that just because I really did not want my Empoleon to get one shot in case he was like super offensive, as I was a little more physically defensive than I am special. And, you know, crits happen, stuff happens. I did not, I need to make sure I get rocks up this match with the Mega Pinsir and the Victini in the back there. So I go ahead and switch out into my Thunderous, expecting that a Electric Moon was probably coming my way here. And I was right. So, again, not knowing what item is yet, I decided just to fire off a nasty plot right away. I kind of noticed that his team in general doesn't really outspeed my Thunders too well outside of that Cobalion. So I was like, huh, might be fun just to do a quick setup, just try and poke some holes. I am Phytinium Z for that Snorlax and Cobalion, and I think he had one other thing weak to fighting that he did not bring. So I thought that'd be helpful this week, and we'll see if it ends up coming in play here at all. But I set that nasty plot right away. He goes for a Toxic. So here I was thinking, oh, this is great. I'm just going to fire off a Thunderbolt here and kill this Rotom. But he lives on four. It was a roll, depending on his exact investment. But uh, from my calculus, it was a roll. It's unfortunate because he gets off a Hydro Pump and does a massive chunk of damage to me. So by the time that he's all said and done, his Rotom does go down, which was his only form of hazard removal, if he had it. Besides, Flygon actually might get Defog. I'm not sure, but I don't think he would have brought it. So... Well, that is really nice for my Empoleon now. It's unfortunate that my Thunderous here is pretty weakened when it could have been very useful for a late game sweep, potentially. I did, like I said, I tried to set up really early, just hoping to poke some holes. Got the unfortunate roll, but it's all good here. I decided to save my Thunderous just in case I can come in later on the Snorlax, or if he ends up being like a slow Cabalion. So fire off that Fitinium Z, just get that one last punch in. And I go right out into my Empoleon here, expecting he's probably going to go for a quick attack. He shows the close combat here. I do have the Shooka Berry for if he had Earthquake or if anything else had Earthquake, like Flygon or whatever. So I didn't uh, really, I guess, expect the close combat. Like, I knew it was probably, uh, there was a good chance he had it, but I was kind of hoping he had Earthquake. I knew I would live, though, it's based on even if he was adamant, I should have lived. And I did. He's been here while I yawn. I'm, it's pretty late here. I'm recording for late in the night because, like I said, I had. A lot of noise pollution going on in the house here earlier today. So, yeah, I do end up going down there, but I do get my rocks up. So, I decided to make kind of an interesting switch here. My Blacephalon versus Team we brought, and the side I brought well, isn't entirely useful, but I kind of noticed, like, he really doesn't have a great switch at this point outside of that Snorlax. And I am more of a support variant with Cephalon this week, which is, I know, kind of weird, but... I really didn't have a great six mob versus team I wanted to bring, so I decided to get a little get a little creative here. So I go for the Will O Wisp here, expecting that Snorlax to come in, and it does. So we see that Snorlax come off, and he gets burned. So now he's down to 80 ish. I go for a knockoff next, which does a good amount of damage, and we, he does show he has that choice band, which, like I said, he likes his offensive Snorlaxes, he likes the choice bands, assault this. Uh, not sure if he's ran Curse Variant yet. I know he has run. Belly Drum and either here or in MDL, which is another lead that we're in together. But uh, yeah, I just go for a knockoff, knock him down to about 50 here. At this point, I see that he does show the pursuit. I'm not sure how much he'll do if I switch out. 
like I said, this Blacephalon was majorly just for like switch switching on the Will Wisp and maybe getting a kill late game on something slower, but I decided I'd rather get a clean switch somebody else. Just keep on going for a knockout, so you're hoping to get the kill on him. He goes for another pursuit. I see that I should live one more. Have a chance to kill him with knockoff here, and uh, he lives on one. Fries off Earthquake does kill me, because I mean I have no defense whatsoever, even if he's burned. So we end up trading there, which I am okay with, as he goes into Kabalia here, which is the one thing that I really did not have a good matchup against. I was a very interesting uh, Hydreigon this week. I was Choice Scarf, which you probably saw there, because I outsped his Kabalion. But I was a uh, physical variant. So I did have superpower. Could have done a lot of damage to him, depending on his exact set. Probably wouldn't have knocked him out, which is why I decided to use turn there, just because I did want to save my choice scarf for taking out the Victini or the Mega Pinsir or the Flygon, if need be, later on. Thought that might be pretty useful. Whew. Sorry, another yawn there. Like I said, this is going to be kind of a pretty tired video, so hopefully my commentary isn't too bad, but I do go back into my Mega Glade here, finally, and uh, I kind of expected that he'd want to save his Kabalion, knowing that it he probably thinks it walls my Hydreigon pretty well, because I switched out, and obviously Fighting and Steel are both super effective with my Rhydon, so I expected here that he'd want to save this, so I just go for an Ice Punch, expecting a switch, but he does stay in, so I mean, I do a little bit of chip damage, he fires down Iron Head, does just under half, at this point, I decide, all right, he's probably just going to stay in, so I fire off close combat. And I he goes down here. He goes into Pinsir. Here, I was trying to decide if I wanted to just do a hard switch in my Rhydon, which I am a setup Rhydon this week. And I really decided... Oh, another young man, that's three. Sorry, guys, this is, like I said, this is going to be kind of a rough commentary, but it's all I can manage at the moment. I don't know if I'll have time later this week to record, so I'm just going to do it now. I do decide here I'd rather not take the damage on my round just in case. It, at this point, it's looking like my wing count. If I fire for a rock polish, I think I should be able to do some very nice damage to his team. So I do let him just go for a quick attack here, take up my Mega Gallade, and I'll go out and ride on. So I'll set up that rock polish here as he switches, which I was kind of surprised about. But I suppose that if I was just a defensive variant, Flygon would probably wall me pretty decently if I just had like ground, ground and uh, rock stab and here is a really interesting thing actually so as you see there like i'm uh i believe i was admin even right on right on is like 130 base attack and this victini just ate an earthquake after rock so they only did 67 percent which i did talk to him after and he was a defensive victini with cobra berry or Col yeah cobra berry to take out my uh, he had Dazzling Gleam to Oko, potentially, depending on my set, obviously, but more, more like to Oko my High Dragon, and then also, obviously, Knock Gallade wouldn't do as much, so he was prepping pretty heavily. That's Yon number four. If only I uh, knew how to edit stuff well, I could put a little Yon counter up in the corner for you guys, that'd be interesting, but... Yeah, he does end up living there as he goes for a Focus Blast, which, luckily for me, I mean, it only does 60%, which considering that my special defense is nowhere near as good as my defense, I was kind of surprised it didn't do more. But I do, like I said, I do know he was a very defensive Victini. I don't know how much attack investment he had, so maybe he did not have max special attack investments. But uh, I am able to just go for that second EQ here, and then obviously after Rocks again, that Pinsir is down to 1. Ice Punch just finishes off the game here. We end up winning 2-0. I am very happy with that. Curtis had a very good team. I was happy to pull out the win against our good buddy here. Good game to him. As always, it's always so much fun to play him. I believe now with the way that this uh, is going, I let's actually pull up that website here. If I go to PBF here. I go to ranking, I think would be I pull you, pull you guys on over here. Let's see, yeah. So I was currently in fourth here, or no, I think I am now currently in fourth because yeah, I am now six and two. If I were to go over this way, yeah, because I'm the Minnesota Shanks there. If you guys weren't aware of that already, so that's me down here, and then yeah, so Kirby and his Albany Terriers there are six and one. Not sure if he's played his match yet. I think they got extended to tomorrow. Say it was official last day of the week, but I think there were some scheduling issues there. Uh, Ryan 
is up at six and two there, which off the screen shows differential. I'm at five differential. Kirby's at ten, and Ryan's at eleven. So depending on uh, Kirby's result here, if he loses, he'll be still above me. If he loses by less than a five-zero, which is pretty likely. So regardless, he'll be either up in second, and I'll be just behind Ryan, or he'll stay probably in third unless he gets like six out or five out. So we'll see what happens there. And then uh, we got our boy Sebi up there who we played week one, who just ob 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 obliterated us. If you haven't seen that, go watch it. It's pretty funny. He trick-roomed on us, and I really did not prep for it it's very well. And he's up at 8 no with 24 differentials, so he is very much the favorite right now of the league as far as winning out. But I'm pretty happy with this because the next couple teams below us here, if I, am, if I were to even scroll down a little more here. Yeah, we got Scoot, who we played last week or two weeks ago. We just recently played him. Or that might have been for NNDL. I'm losing track of the leagues here because a lot of the same people from this league are in NNDL as well. But he's sitting at 4-4 four and four of 7 differential, and then St. Kilda is at that 4-4 four and four as well. And then, obviously, Andy there is at 4-4 four and four as well, just one out of the playoff spot. So the three teams that are 4-4 four four kind of fighting down there, I have that two-win uh, break over them. So that's really nice for me. I have a little bit of breathing room as far as if I have a bad match or just get outplayed. So that's kind of exciting. At this point in the season with, I believe we have 11 weeks total, so three more weeks. If I get one more win, there's a very good chance I'm making playoffs, just depending on how those guys below me do. Although, Scoot there, if I move this over, it's a little more, actually. You can see the differential there. He does have the higher differential on me, even with two less wins. I've had a lot of very close one and two O's, so there's a good chance that uh, if we end up at the same record, he he will end up with a higher differential, so i got to be very careful of that. But again, I mean, this is all on a PBF website. I'll link it in the description as always. It's a very, very well put together website. Lots of fun stuff on there. Lots of fun statistics and obviously the league rankings. You can check out everyone's team, their coaches, all that stuff. It's a very, very nice website there. Just for fun too, I guess I'll, I'll move this back over just a little bit here. We'll take a look at the bottom, bottom here as well. So we got uh, Pittsburgh Primarinas down there at 3-5. and five. Uh, Noodle and the Straptors are at 2-5. and five. Same thing with uh, Ginger. It's at uh, two and six actually. So yeah, it looks like oh, yeah, because Noodle has to play at Kirby there. And then uh, we have Triple A and the Waters down there at two and six. And then uh, Curtis, who we just played, is actually zero and eight, which is very unfortunate. He, uh, like I said, he's a he's a very strong battler. He has a very good team. He's had a couple pretty unlucky matches. A couple matches just one or two plays went didn't quite go his way, or he misclicked and stuff like that. He, hopefully it'll turn around for him Him next season. This season, obviously, at this point, is kind of a bust. I don't think with three weeks left, yeah, there's, there's no possible way for him to make playoffs. So he's out at this point after this week. But best of luck to him for next season. He'll he'll come back. I know he always does. He's a he's a resilient guy. He'll he'll find a way back. If him, him and his round one Snorlax, maybe next season I'll be able to sneak that out from under him. But we'll see. He always finds a way above me in the draft order. So... Yeah, we'll uh, go with that there. I guess too, as long as we're on here, like since I'm not too worried about time on this video, let's uh, go. We can go over to my team page here. We can see some of my mods. So we see like Bocephalon's come to six games and six and four, Thunder's to eight games, seven and six. I think the only mod I haven't brought is Floor, just surprisingly, which is just sitting there at zero, zero, zero. So sorry, Floor, just, just haven't really been useful, I guess, so far. You can just kind of see the rest there of my team. So this is all the kind of stuff you can see on the website, which is just again very fun. I'm just I'm very happy with my Mega Glade here sitting at ten and five. That's always fun to see. And then my Rhydon's at four and one now, which is awesome too. But Rhydon I think has the best uh, KD differential as far as uh, rate ratio, I guess KD ratio because at four and one because Mega Glade's at two, and I think that's my next highest. No, Hydreigon's at seven and two actually. So yeah. So those three are kind of leading my team as far as the ratio, and then obviously as far as actual kills, Thunderous and Blacephalon and Hydreigon and Mega Glade are all sitting up there. So yeah, I mean, just if you have a second, take check check out the website. It's very fun to look at everyone's team and their KDs and all that sort of stuff. Just a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, until uh, next week here, we play Noodle and the Straptors this next week here, which uh, I guess we'll give a little preview here. He's got a very, very scary team as far as his core go. Like you can see right here, he's got both of his cores going with that Clefable Skarmory Salamence, which is an amazing Ferris Steel uh, Dragon core. I don't know how he got that. 
And then he still topped off with my Lodic Salazzle Mungus, which is, again, terrifying. And rounded out his team with some other very good mods of Gligar, but Champ Town playing Bouflant. And then one of my personal favorite Megas, Mega Manetric there with that Intimidate Fast Speed. Going to be a really painful team to take care of here, so we'll see how we manage with that. That will be week 9 then, so I was right that this was week 8. And I'll bring you guys that probably later on this week. I go on spring break here starting on Wednesday, so that'll be nice. Although the following week I'll be down in Dallas for almost a full week. So I either will record down in Dallas if I find time or we'll have to record the following week when I get back and get some extensions going on my leagues just for time's sake. I, I, need, I need some time away from home and just relax. I've, I've been really stressed out. So me and my friend plan a trip and, uh, that's where we're going. So, I mean, if hey, you guys are from Dallas or know the area, let me know some fun stuff to do. Or even if you want to meet up, I could potentially meet you. So just let me know. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week.